everybody. Welcome to this video with myself and Mr. Simon Bates. Hello. And we are here to talk about tenor saxophone mouthpieces, specifically the Eisen range of Japanese made saxophone mouthpieces for tenor. Uh, there are three models currently on the market, the Zero, the LS and the SO. And we're going to talk about all three and Simon's going to demonstrate them and we're going to have a little chat and play for you so you can hear the differences too. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, first up, we've got the Zero, which is the latest model. Uh, and by the way, there's links to all the models in the notes uh, of the video and also the little cards that pop up. Uh, Price-wise, at time of recording, these are around 340-ish English pounds and the LS and the SO are around 280-ish. Uh, but obviously those are subject to change. However, we want to talk about the Zero because it's made of a premium hard rubber, whereas the other two models are kind of like a hybrid resin rubber, which is slightly different. And also this has a huge extra large chamber uh, with a rollover uh, baffle. So it's very sort of linkish, classic linkish in a way, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but with, with a bit of edge as well, which is nice. Exactly. So why don't we hear it, Simon, and then you can give us a bit of a thoughts on it. Yeah, it kind of makes me want to play in a sort of a mainstreamy fashion, I think, you know, it's, it's it does have a bit of edge, you know, you, you can push it so you know, it, 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 it kind of goes a, a, a bit more than uh, probably you'd expect a, a, a Link 8 or 8 Star um, to, to, to do. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got a really nice even tone. Um, it, it's quite dark, mm. Um, mm. you know, and, and uh, as you know, I do use a Link now and again when I want to play quietly. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I would quite happily substitute this for it. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, it wasn't being offered, but... No, 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 I didn't <laughs> no, But I think if you like that large chamber, fat, fruity tenor sound, mm. that's what you always get from those kind of vibes. Um, some of those kind of link variants, if you if we will call it that, can get a bit too dark, maybe a bit a bit dull, a bit tubby, mm. but this still has plenty of bite to me. And I think that's... Yeah, it does. That's I mean, I, I think this, this, is, this is better than a link. Basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. But it, you can see the market because um, you know Link's obviously a, a very big mouthpiece. But this yeah. this kind of outlinks a Link and then gives you a bit of variation in tone that you wouldn't get from a Link as well. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that's the zero, everybody, and that's available in just a small number of tip openings. These are all handmade, absolutely handmade from premium hard rubber in Japan. Uh, we are now going to talk to you about the other two models, which are the LS and the SO, which are slightly different kettle of fish. And we'll be back with those in just a second. So we're back and Simon has got the LS on here, which was the original Eisen Link style. And I know we keep talking about Link style uh, and there's lots of reasons why. I suppose most tenor mouthpieces of that fashion of the large chamber do reference the classic Links from the 50s and 60s. But what's really interesting is uh, among the different manufacturers out there, although they use similar types of chambers and sizes, there's huge difference and variation in how the mouthpieces actually end up sounding. And mm. proof of that is this LS versus the Zero that we just tried, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but let's hear it and then, mm -hmm. then maybe right. give us your thoughts, Simon. <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting mouthpiece. It, it kind of, it, it's a louder link, um, almost outlinks a link because it, it is a dark sound, but it's still got the power mm. that perhaps you wouldn't expect to get from a link. You know, mm. the reason I play links um, is, is if I want to play something really quietly. I mean, the reason I bought it was because I was doing a gig where they insisted that all instruments were acoustic. Mm. So, um, you know, I had an acoustic guitar and an acoustic bass. You can't match that with a uh, with a Guadala. So no, you, you know, I wanted the quietest mouthpiece I could get, and the link sort of fit the bill. Yeah. Um, so you know, this, this is slightly different in that you could use this as your number one mouthpiece. You could sit on lead tenor and and, and actually cut through and and uh, uh, you know, sort of have that that kind of really strong mainstream sound, um, and, and and still you know still have the bite to to, to be heard. 
And how would you compare it to the Zero? Which it has a, the Zero has a slightly larger chamber still. It's huge inside that Zero. Yeah. Um, how would you compare from a playing point of view? I mean, view? they're both quite bright um, for the type of mouthpiece they are. They're designed to be dark. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think the Zero was was perhaps a little bit more refined, had a, a, a bit more of a, a, a you know kind of a, a, core, uh, a core to it. Whereas uh, as this is a bit. Well, it, it's got the brightness, but it's got the darkness as well, if you see yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. that's, that, that, I've just con contradicted myself, but, um, you know, I know what I mean anyway. So, <laughs> that's, so that's what important counts. thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think maybe if you're in that market, try them both. That's the point, isn't yeah. it? Because it might yeah. be a little bit in the facing uh, design as well, which may vary how it feels comfort wise for you in terms of response. Yeah. Um, but we're going to give the SO a try, which is based on the Soloist. So it has a, a smaller rounder chamber. Uh, so totally different to these, and it, and it thus sounds quite different as well. So we'll be back in just a second with the Eisen SO for tenor. <laughs> And there we go, that's the I's and S over tenor. I said round chamber, I didn't mean that, forgive me. I meant sort of uh, train, tunnel, horseshoe, whatever you want to call it, um, this shape uh, chamber on, on the SOs, uh, on the tenor anyway, uh, the soprano one is round. We've done a separate video about those. We have indeed, yeah. Um, now that was a totally different vibe. It kind of shouted vintage yeah, me. absolutely. Know. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think this is, again, you know, it's, it's kind of vintage link type of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, nice and mellow, nice, nice, broad, big sound, though. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got a great bottom end, a pretty good top end as well, to be honest. Um, nice all round mouthpiece for uh, for mainstream type of stuff. You know, I, 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 I happily sit in a section playing this. Um, you know, a, 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 in a big band, that is, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, perhaps a solo mouthpiece for, for more mainstreamy stuff. Do you feel, because the uh, the, the chamber and the, the facing length is shorter on this than on the other two, do you feel just from an actual sound emission or pr production of the sound, is there any difference there in the immediacy, or do they both feel... Um, or all three feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, all way. feel pretty pretty comfortable. I mean, there's perhaps a, a you know richness from from this that the other two don't have, um, but you still got a little bit of a buzz. It's not you know not quite as buzzy as the uh, the first one we tried. But yeah, I mean, uh, um, you know, as I say, it's, it's it's a nice warm sound, which is mm. you know it's like having a cuddle. It was. <laughs> well, that's a different video which we can do another day. But it screams sort of dance hall is what it screams. Yeah, me. Just yeah, in exactly. That, I mean, yeah. maybe a little bit of what you're playing, but it, it maybe even on some uh, vintage horns. Actually, that'd be really interesting to mm. try yeah. one of these SOs on on an old, uh, you know, 30s or 40s Selma. Absolutely, might, might be yeah, a nice yeah, combination. Really nice, yeah. Um, so maybe that's something we could we could try and organise for next time. Yeah, I've never thought of that before. Indeed, um, yeah, we should do that. Okay, well, cool. Well, those are the three Eisens uh, in our eyes and in our uh, hands. Uh, and our Eisens. And uh, hey, hopefully that gives you a good idea about the range anyway. They are available in a variety of tip openings. So depending on your experience and, and your setup and what you like, um, just uh, give us a shout and we can help you choose the right thing on that. Uh, and like I say, if you did want to try them, head over to dorks.co.uk for more information. But Simon, if you can play us out with a little more of okay. this beautiful S.O. Eisen, that would be fab. 